Uh, really glad you all are here. I know some of you came from as far away as, as Europe, and it means a lot to us that you are here really as thought partners with Recursion. Um, before I dive in, I would love for us to show a brief timeline video, and during that, I'm gonna grab the clicker. trip down memory lane for me. Um, over the last 10 years, we have built Recursion from a little tiny company with just a few people into what you see today. And I'm so excited that today you're gonna get to experience Recursion the way we do. You're gonna get to interact with our applications, you're gonna get to meet our team, and you're gonna get to see what we're building right up close. And I hope that throughout today, you're able to become familiar with our mission to decode biology to radically improve lives. And so I wanna tell you just a little bit about the state of recursion, the story of recursion, and then I'm gonna leave all of the exciting stuff to the rest of the team to share with you today. But before I do, I have something really, really important to share, which is this. <laughs> small technical issue. We're going to be making uh, forward-looking statements, and so it's important for all of you to understand the caveats that come along with that. So let me go back to almost day one. I think this was January 1st, 2014. This is a conference room at the University of Utah that we were able to sublease, right next to a utility room which we turned into our first lab. Uh, and this was the morning of January 1st, the first day our lease started. And I was sitting here starting to write our first grant, which was our first major funding source from the NIH. And we had one hypothesis. This was a, an experiment from the beginning. And that hypothesis was very simple. It was simply that in biology, structure suits function. And I'll tell you a little bit later today about the story of the first disease we worked on, even prior to recursion, cerebral cavernous malformation in Dr. Dean Lee's laboratory. Um, you'll hear a bit about that phase two trial that's now enrolling. But at that moment, we had this incredible, ambitious vision, which was to do an experiment to ask the question, could images of human cells be an unlocking event for this industry, a new kind of omics that would allow you to have an entirely different order of magnitude of data from which you could unlock not just a few understandings of, of, of molecular pathways, but you could start to actually unlock a map and navigate a map of biological and chemical relationships. That is how we began at Recursion. And if you go back and look at that grant, it's open sourced. It sounds like a very nerdy scientific version of what I just said. But over those first years, we stayed super scrappy. This is us in San Diego packing up a U-Haul full of used lab equipment, which we drove through the night, our co my co-founder Blake and I, back to Salt Lake City. We unpacked that lab equipment, and then we realized that we didn't have service contracts with any of the companies that had sold it to us, and most of it was useless. There was a ton of learning in those, those early days. But we stayed scrappy, and the data kept getting frustrating and then better, exciting, frustrating, but at the end of the day, it always came back to leading us to believe that this hypothesis of images being an unlocking event wasn't the top that we could get to. And we started to believe that there was something more ambitious that we could believe. And that's the second hypothesis. 
that if we leverage technology to build massive data sets, not just of images, but of transcriptomics, proteomics, metabolomics, in vivomics, all of these different layers of biology, we could turn drug discovery from this artisanal, bespoke, extraordinarily hard process into something much more like a search algorithm. And that's what we've been working on for the last nine years, two months, and a few days. We've been working on that hypothesis. And today we're gonna share with you the progress we're making against it. We, we started this mission at the right time. And that was as much vision as it was just dumb luck. I finished my PhD in Dean's lab on October 30th, I believe. We started the company on November 5th of 2013, which was at the, what I hope is close to the end of this 60 year trend in declining efficiency in our industry. And this is not for lack of effort. Incredible scientists have brought us miraculous medicines over this time. But the fact remains that biology, chemistry are so extraordinarily complex that it is getting harder and harder for us to bump our own knowledge as humans up against that complexity. And in fact, I would argue that today, we are bumping up against that line of human understanding amidst this system that is so complex constantly. And that's one of the reasons why it's getting harder and harder to discover new medicines. Along that same 60 year time frame, you look at the world of technology. Here looking at Moore's Law. You heard about Reed Hastings at Netflix. A little too early to go do the bio thing. We've seen the way that the exponential improvement in efficiency of technology has come to so many other industries. And yet we're just at the second half of the chessboard, as Martin shared, in the entire field. And it is now time to apply this to the field of medicine. And so recursion was really founded to take advantage of this opportunity, this arbitrage that exists between declining efficiency, butting up against this incredibly complex system and the opportunity that exists with technology to actually charge full steam into that complexity. And that's what I'm so excited to be doing at Recursion, what I think all of us are so excited to be doing. So when you look at the traditional uh, uh, drug discovery process, it's incredibly laborious. Fantastic scientists are working to build new assays and new understandings for individual diseases, often sort of one at a time. They're developing a brand new assay at each of these steps in many cases to understand a, a different pathway or a different target in the context of a specific disease. But the reality is that the way we've built that system to date, the tools have not existed to make the data transferable across and between each of these boxes very, very fluidly. And what Recursion is trying to build is leveraging automation and machine learning to make data flow fluidly, not only across each of these boxes and between each of these boxes, but to make sure that the data generated in every program at Recursion can inform every other program we do. That the insights we're generating, even if they're too complex for humans to totally fully comprehend, are actually gonna be available to that next scientist via a web application. And we still are doing all of this with the wet lab, as Martin shared, because that is essential to building the training set to enable us to start to map and navigate biology. And if we can be successful in this experiment, what the upside could look like is changing the shape of the biopharma funnel. Today, it looks pretty much like a V. Scientists do incredibly difficult experiments against many long odds to try and develop medicines that will make an impact for patients. And when they succeed, it's something to be celebrated. What we hope is that by doing this experiment, we can expand the neck of this funnel by searching biology beyond what is in the literature, by finding relationships between chemistry and biology that one couldn't find just looking at the papers that exist today. And it would be very difficult to find using the traditional sort of unidimensional outputs. And then rather than just looking at efficacy early, we can start to measure things like transcriptomics and predictive admed and digital uh, 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 tolerability studies in animal models that enable us to not only look at efficacy signals, but to actually predict molecules that will fail early. Because what we want to do is narrow that funnel as quickly as possible and enrich our deep work as a company, as a team, in the programs that have the highest probability of success. And if we can do that successfully, 
And if we use robotics and software to do it at scale and at speed, then we can start to change the shape of this funnel into a T. And if you could get all the way to a T, that would be perfection. You could explore all of biology and chemistry. You could identify the perfect molecule and take it all the way to the market with no attrition. That would fundamentally reshape the economics of drug discovery, drug development, and our industry. And of course, that is unachievable. But we want to get as close to that as possible. And that's the experiment we're doing here. And these are leading indicators of our success. This is our funnel on the left in blue. You can see that since 2017, all of our programs are represented here. And you can see that we're starting to shape our funnel more like a T. There's more work to do, but we're making that progress. And what it means is for our programs, we can go from start to IND for much less and much faster than the traditional industry approach. And again, there's so much more work to do. We're in the very, very early days. I think these are leading indicators of what recursion can deliver. So I want to tell you a little bit about 2022 before we set the table for all of the incredible insights and work you're going to hear from the team today. Looking back at 2022, recursion matured this tech bio sector. We were one of the first companies to start clinical trials in this space. We were one of the first companies to sign some of the most significant partnerships in this space. And in 2022, we initiated five clinical trials. We're now planning a sixth clinical trial for our Axon 1 APC program. We have novel oncology programs coming down the pipe, including two I'm really excited about with Target Alpha, Target Gamma. Today, you'll actually get to hear we're going to unveil what Target Gamma is, a very exciting opportunity in the context of ovarian cancer. We're advancing some of the largest collaborations in tech-enabled drug discovery with Bayer in fibrosis and Roche Genentech in neuroscience in a single oncology indication. But what's important to remember, that Roche Genentech collaboration, that isn't just the largest collaboration in tech-enabled drug discovery. That is one of the largest blue sky collaborations to go for a decade across the whole of neuroscience to map and navigate neuroscience with Aviv Vergev and her team at Genentech to try and deliver exciting new medicines against novel targets in some of the most important intractable diseases that face humanity today. That's a huge task, but it's one we're delighted to be working with our partners on. And today, you heard Martin say it. The dry lab by itself, not sufficient. Computation by itself, not sufficient. If you want to make a dent in this industry, you have to have both the wet lab, the dry lab, side by side, virtuous cycles of atoms and bits, making your algorithm better and better and leading you to better and better experiments. And at Recursion today, we have what we believe to be one of, if not the largest, proprietary, relatable biological data sets in the world at over 21 petabytes and growing as you can see right this moment in the laboratory next to you. And you'll get tours a little bit later today. What this also means is that we are leading in an entirely new sector. When recursion started, I think there were 10 companies that called themselves tech-enabled drug discovery companies. Today, there are hundreds, probably too many. Uh, many of these companies focused on very, very limited point solutions. But if you look at some of the more advanced companies, uh, our colleagues at Frost and Sullivan did this analysis, you can start to kind of look for the, the competitive advantages and differentiators of these companies. And you can see here on the x-axis, on the far right side, you can start to see companies who have focused on building that wet lab and that dry lab side by side. That's a major differentiator for these companies because you have to have the data on which to train the algorithm to make the kind of impact that we want to make here at Recursion. And on the y-axis, you see the maturity of these companies, the scale of the pipeline, the scale of the partnerships, Recursion in the upper right, leading this burgeoning sector. And I think for all of us who've been in this space, and even those of us who've been in large pharma or worked closely in that space, it now feels inevitable that technology will become a critical foundational underpinning of this industry. And it's a question of who, when, and how. And I think Recursion truly better positioned than almost anyone to deliver this value proposition to this industry. And that is important because we ultimately want to impact the lives of patients, their families, our team, and our community. So before I finish, I just want to share with you a little bit of a highlight of what's new today. We're going to give guidance for our pipeline 
Two of the programs are phase two safety and efficacy study in CCM2, uh, or in CCM. We're gonna give guidance on our interim phase two safety uh, readout for NF2. We're gonna give guidance on our phase one CDIF program. We're gonna give an update on our FAP phase two program. We're gonna give guidance on the start of our phase one B2 Axon one APC uh, program moving to the clinic. And then also disclose uh, the target for Project Gamma, which we're very excited about. On the partnership side, we're gonna share for the very first time in our collaboration with Bayer, uh, a look into the pipeline that we're building together with them, and we're gonna share updates on our partnership with Roche and Genentech, which has been extraordinarily exciting for this team. And finally, Martin alluded to this, we're gonna share on the platform, uh, today, earlier this morning, we released the largest data set in this space. We released 2.2 million images of human cells, across nearly the entire genome in an open sourced fashion, along with what we call molecular uh, recommender uh, or MOLREC. And this is a tool at recursion that we've been using recently internally to help us understand how small molecules are interacting with this complex space of biology. We've given people just a tiny snippet into this. And in the past, we've actually run competitions on some of these data sets. We've hired incredible talent off the back of some of these data sets and the innovative ideas that have come out of those competitions. And today, I think we're setting the table with the largest such data release of its kind to really continue to propel this field forward, not only at recursion, uh, but across the industry as well. And so ultimately, I wanna end on our mission to decode biology to radically improve lives. It's so meaningful to me. It's such a simple mission, but if we are successful in delivering this mission, we can have extraordinary impact on the world. And that is why every one of us at Recursion is here today, and I hope it's why all of you are here as well.